reason. It's because you never left these endless fields, where an oak tree sails the horizon like a lost galleon, where rabbits crouch in mad dog heat under a sky full of eyes, where a gunshot scatters acres of birds leaving wires like empty staves, where a road runs straight for hours towards a shimmering spire, where a man can live all his life beyond calling distance. This next poem I'm going to read was inspired by a house I lived in for a while um, with my husband. Uh, we were actually caretaking it and it was a big Edwardian house in Oxfordshire. Uh, so it didn't belong to us and it hadn't been renovated for decades. So it was very much in a, in a state. There wasn't any central heating. Um, there was a lot of old furniture that would have been in the house ever since it was first built. A lot of old photographs. Um, and so it had a very, very strong sense of the past and its own history. And we always felt like the transient uh, people in the house, and that the, the house itself had its own personality and individuality. And it was a great place for inspiring poems because there were so many old stories lying around. And this was inspired by digging around in the garden and uh, finding bits of china in the soil. Bone China. I want to leave something behind, like the maid who cracked one night the length of her heart, who crept shaking down the staircase to where the service shone on the dresser, plates pale as a row of moons. She stacked them in her arms, a weight greater than all she owned, bore their white tower to the kitchen garden, where she stood between the soft fruit beds and smashed each one against the wall with a planetary anger. That dawn, she walked out of her story forever, though her flavour salted the servants' tongues for months, and clearing the ground a hundred years later of this self-seeded scrub of ash. I can still piece bits of her together, white and sharp, as if the earth were teething. I visited Australia a few years back and went to a wildlife sanctuary um, just as it was getting dark at dusk. And there was a whole row of cages uh, with parrots in them. And many of the parrots had been um, donated to the sanctuary um, when their owners had died or people just didn't want to keep them anymore. And it was quite eerie because as we walked along uh, the row with these cages to either side of us, um, our presence began to prompt the birds to speak. Um, and you suddenly hear, heard all these voices. And it was one of those moments which was very eerie and very memorable. And this poem at the Parrot Sanctuary came out of it. At the Parrot Sanctuary. At the parrot sanctuary, our presence disturbs their sleep. Heads bob and weave, beaks biting the wire. Some have plucked the feathers from their tails, their breasts, as if trying to find out love. Bright eyes stare out from circles of wizened skin, fix us. And then the dead begin to speak. A chorus of greetings and goodbyes, nicknames, profanities, the ghost of a woman's laugh. No one can live long with this ventriloquy, voices thrown from the dark. Not us, who leave them quickly to their cages, to the silence that only comes when we are gone. Grace. You've been living for this for weeks without knowing it. The moment the house enters, like a city in August, so completely it forgets you exist. Light withdraws slowly, is almost gone before you notice. In the stillness, everything becomes itself. A circle of white plates on the kitchen table, the serious chairs that attend them. Even the roses on the papered walls seem to open a little wider. It looks simple, the glass bars holding whatever is offered, cut flowers or the thought of them. Simple, 
Though not easy, this waiting without hunger in the near dark for what you may be about to receive. This poem, Among Women, is based on the Bible story of the Annunciation when the angel Gabriel appears to Mary um, and tells her that she's going to be the mother of the Son of God. Um, but the starting point for this poem is um, what would happen if Mary hadn't been there when the angel arrived. Had, it's a sort of annunciation that she's missed. And the phrase among women is from the Bible. Um, Gabriel says to her, blessed art thou among women. Among women. One evening I came back home and everything was just as I'd left it. Except the bowls gleamed with a new knowledge. The cat wore his yellow gaze like a mask. And I sensed the house had been visited, wings unfurling like ferns in the quiet air. I was blessed with children anyway. I shook my life out like a cloth. And perhaps there is a purpose after all in not being chosen. The minute my clock has never regained Sunlight in the guest room, climbing its ladder of dust. Earlier this year I was commissioned to um, write a poem about carers and the caring profession. And I went to a residential home for the elderly. Um, and I spent the day there uh, with the staff and with the residents. And um, made notes and went away to write some poems about the experience and one of the things that I overheard when I was there was one of the residents actually saying I want to go back to the angel and it was one of those sentences that just immediately um, stayed in the mind as very um, haunting and strange and it, it resulted in this poem which is called I want to go back to the angel. Why won't somebody take her? It's only a short walk away across the late summer allotments where the dill must already be running to seed. Meanwhile, here are tunes from the war. Her head grows feathery with voices in a room bright as a kindergarten. A meal appears out of nowhere and is frightening. Then it's time for undressing again, though nothing's been done, nothing that should have been. The takings not counted and locked in the safe, the tables still sticky with rings. Tomorrow, they croon, like the daughter who will always come later. Tomorrow, promises the wind across the river. Tomorrow, sing the creaking wings. What happens while we are sleeping? Frost, foxes, owl kills, the wheel of stars, thundering lorries, with somewhere to get to by dawn. Beads of dew forming along the telegraph wires. A red deer delicately eating each closed tulip like a prayer. Afterlife. As far back as great, 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 names and faces are scoured away like plates scraped clean of painted flowers by daughters wanting more. What remains after voice and gesture are lost is less love than force of habit, the angle of a peeler's thinning blade, the battered wisdom of the pan you boil the morning milk in, its patina of burnt lace. If only I could learn to be this fit for purpose, the passed down smoothness handled ash, the dailiness like prayer or bread and the mouth's need of them. Risen. Like the woman who wakes at dawn to find herself three fields from home, my body is given to me like a flower, the kind that stars the hedgerow every spring, the kind I used to pick as a child without thinking. Perhaps if I keep very still and empty, I too will grow into stem, leaf, corona, become the common wayside name for love. The thought opens up in this early morning light, 
with such a wild sweetness, it could fill the whole house for a day. <laughs>